What is up, YouTube? You are listening to Behind the Wall, presented by Perky Jerky. I'm Kane Jr. 88, and as always, I'm joined by my co-hosts and cohorts, or whatever the hell you want to call them, Thermite 917 and Junior Nation 5788. And this week, we are talking about Kansas. Yes, the Hollywood Casino 400 at, at the Kansas Speedway. Uh, Martin Truex Jr. Wins, uh, wins again his seventh win of the season. It was one of the more better amount of half races this season. So, uh, Tyler, uh, give us your thoughts. Well, I'm just going to give you the race recap, not necessarily my thoughts. We'll save that for a moment, Kane. But, yes, Martin Truex Jr. did win the Hollywood Casino 400 at Kansas. Kurt Busch, Ryan Blaney, Chase Elliott, Denny Hamlin round out the top five. Chris Buescher, Dale Jr., Kevin Harvick, Eric Almarola. And Kyle Busch round out the top 10. Martin Truex Jr. led two times for 91 laps. The most laps led on the day was Kyle Busch with five times at 112. So those two Toyotas alone led over 200 laps of the race. There was 10 cautions for 49 laps, two of them being stages. Right off the bat, we had a competition caution for severe rain that happened the night before. And then the first real drama bit of the day was Kyle Larson having an engine problem. He came down pit road and they sent him back out there and he eventually blew up. And when Kyle Larson blew up, that caused the yellow right before the end of stage one. And Kyle Busch was the winner of that one. Then we got back going and Brett Moffitt, he had uh, an incident. The second incident of the day, and that was actually conveniently before the end of stage two. And that made stage two really interesting. Some people chose to pit, some people chose to stay out. Denny Hamlin and Jimmy Johnson being two of them. And Denny somehow held him off in a one-lap shootout, getting the win of stage two. And then, well, things started getting really interesting. Jimmy Johnson, out of nowhere, spun out two times in a row. Very similar. One time off of four coming into the grass, and one time in the middle of three and four. And then on the ensuing restart after that, all hell breaks loose. With Eric Jones, who totally just overcorrected, causing a massive crash. Nine people involved. Plenty of people were out of the race at, after that. And uh, definitely setting another tone for the finish, and obviously the playoff scenario with Jamie McMurray being completely out of it as well as Matt Kenseth. Then it got back going. A.J. Allmendinger caused the final caution of the race with around 30-ish to go. Set up the final restart. Not too much happened. Martin Truex Jr. got away, and it looked like Kurt Busch was holding his own there after spinning the tires, but uh, he just couldn't quite get to him. Martin Truex Jr. was too strong, and he come home with his seventh victory of the season, as we have already mentioned. So let's go ahead go ahead and get into race ratings nick you have not talked yet so i'm going to give you the ability to give us your race rating first yes i too have a voice and i you think do. you know it, it was one of the better mile and a half of the season i am going to give it an eight we might have talked about there wasn't much racing for the lead but the drama was just really ramped up i mean it was a cutoff race and kansas has seen its share of drama in the past and this race was no different. I mean, it was. It really felt like Talladega at times. It was. There was just so much happening, a lot of uh, drama on the points and on the racetrack. So yeah, I mean, there's really not much else to say. It was a very impressive race for Kansas. I hope the the rest of the playoffs can continue the trend of excitement. Uh, Kane, what are you going to give? Well, I think I am going to give it a seven. As you know, it was definitely one of the one of the better mile and a half races this season, and there's really not much else to say about it. It was way better than uh, Chicago landing, and I was at that race, I'll say that. So, because there wasn't that, like, that whole drama factor of guys being on the cutoff, being eliminated, stuff like that. So, pretty much all i got to say. Tyler? Thank you, Kane. Well, I'm going to split you guys and make it even a uh, seven and a half. I thought it was a really solid race. One of the better ones of the year, especially with the craziness, that huge wreck really threw a wrench into things. The racing was solid. You can make passes on the bottom, run the outside. I thought that was good. Despite it, obviously, as Nick said, there wasn't a whole lot of passing for the league going. It was still predictable in the fashion of the Toyotas absolutely drilling ass out there. And uh, it's unfortunate. But it, if you look past it, there was a good enough elements to just... It was all there. It just was a really good race. I think with a better finish and a different winner, it could have been a nine, nine and a half maybe. So... It was a good race. We're happy with it. We'll move on to Martinsville. Well, it was a pretty slow news week other than the fact of one thing that really stood out and the media really hounded it. Dale Jr.'s having a baby! 
A baby! A baby! I just had I'd ever get a chance to feel that again, and it feels just as good, if not better than the first, because of how hard we tried year after year after year, running second all them years, wondering why. I gotta get my head together. I gotta thank uh, Kelly Blue Book, Chevy, and Sprint. He got it in there. He did it. Yeah. Yeah. Holy cow. All right, now it's time to hand out some awards for the Kansas race weekend, and starting off with the boner of the week. We got two of them, but the first one. It goes to NASCAR for their little rules enforcement of Martin Truex Jr. changing lanes by going below the white line on a restart before the start finish line. Now, apparently, that was a new little rules thing they added for the weekend. They said about it in the drivers' meeting. But Carvin Harvick, who was right behind Martin Truex Jr. in third place, did the identical thing to him, but they only penalized Martin Truex Jr. Where's the consistency here? That's bullshit, NASCAR. You are a bunch of damn boners. Next boner, please. <laughs> I am disgusted. Yeah, so am I. The next one goes to Matt Kenseth's pit crew because they completely screwed up. All right, so we know Kenseth's gotten the big wreck. He had a lot of damage. Uh, they didn't work on it under the red flag, but when they could work on it, they sent another guy over the wall to make that seven guys working on the car. You can't do that. You can only have six working on the car itself. So apparently someone couldn't count and it took Kenseth out of the championship hunt. That is just terrible for him. I hate it for his guys. Well, except the one guy that screwed up. And I mean, Kenseth handled it with class like he usually does, but you don't deserve to be in the championship if you're gonna mess up on something so easy like that. Ah. Damn it! Speaking of damn it! Our next award is Damn Mother Nature! Oh, oh wait, never mind. Uh, and that goes to the uh, forecast for the Xfinity race, which looked pretty bad. Uh, they had moved the start time up two whole minutes, and, uh, well, it really didn't matter much because they were able to get the entire race in without even a single stoppage for rain. Wow, hey, Mother Nature! Thanks a lot! I appreciate that. Well, we appreciate that. All of us NASCAR fans who actually watch the Xfinity series, we appreciate it. Next award. The next award is Coping with Slowness. And that goes to Starcom Racing and Derek Cope. Starcom Racing has been a newly developed team that have come around in the past couple of months or whatever, and all of a sudden, you know, they're just like, oh, hey, we're going to finally enter our first race in Kansas. And uh, they were awful, as kind of expected. They were nearly 20 miles an hour off the pace in practice, a second slower than the guy in front of them. They didn't even run a qualifying lap. Jesus Christ. They were terrible. And they only kept from starting last because Ryan Blaney's time was disallowed. They were lapped on lap 10. They were in the garage three laps later with an engine problem, came back out, ran a handful more laps, and finally, after 35 laps of running on the racetrack, they retired the car with handling issues. Ah, welcome to Cup, guys. You suck. Next award. Next award is Kyle Larson. Son of a bitch! <laughs> and that goes to Kyle Larson, who, through no fault of his own, is now out of the championship running due to a blown engine early in the race. Oh, man. I hated it for Kansas guys. I might hate it for Larson's guys even more because of how fast he was all year. He did not deserve this. He was running pretty well. I know he qualified like 13th, but you know, he was fast in practice and he was going to be just fine. He was going to advance unless something stupid like this happened. I can't believe it. And they, they tried all they could to keep him out there. They went through all the electronics and the usual, and then a lot of smoke came out of the car and that was the end of the day. So I don't, I don't want to get emotional, but man, he was go he was one of those guarantees to go to Homestead, and it didn't happen. That shows you how crazy NASCAR can be sometimes. Next award. Next award is Park the Shitbox, and that goes to Brett Moffitt. Well, he, uh, typical BK Racing fashion, he brought out two cautions, both for the exact same instance. He blew a right front tire and pancaked the right side of his car both times. And what does he do? Well, he keeps going. 
He didn't, he didn't uh, go to the garage and get the car fixed. No, 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 no. We got to keep on going 20 miles an hour under, under minimum speed. I don't, I'm surprised they were in NASCAR kept them out there, even though they were probably having trouble meeting minimum speed. And he pancaked it again. Ah, and, uh, yeah, I, come, uh, I don't know what to say. BK Racing, you guys got to learn to freaking park the shitbox, damn it. Ah, next award. <laughs> And another thing with that is that I know the Wood Brothers Twitter account mentioned something about that. Like, you can always count on, you know, BK Racing to screw things up. <laughs> the next award is Ricky Wallhouse. And it should be no surprise who that goes to. It's Ricky Stenhouse Jr., who was having a subpar day like he usually does. And to make things worse, he cut a tire and went into the wall, and that pretty much ended his day. Really not much else to say there. I mean, he was probably not going to advance to the next round anyway. Obviously, he didn't, want, didn't win Talladega, so that kind of sealed it right there. But still, I mean, it was a good season for him. They're going to work on some more things until the season's over and move on to next year. So that's about all you can say to that next award. All right, our next award is Spinneroo, and that goes to Jimmy Johnson. Well, the seven-time champ, it looked pretty bleak at Kansas. Uh, he spun out unexpectedly, like completely on his own. He didn't have any help from anybody. The car just lost it coming out of turn number four. Very lucky not to tear up the splitter in the grass. And, well, the crew did have to tape down the hood as a result of the uh, grass getting underneath the car. So... They came back out. They never got a chance to meet minimum speed because the very next caution, that's right, he spins again. This time he makes very light contact with the outside wall in turn number three. They got to repair the car once again. And fortunately for Jimmy, though, the big wreck happened. He was able to get through it unscathed, and he brought home an 11th place finish. And as a result, he was able to advance to the round of eight. So his hopes and dreams of getting that eighth championship are still alive. Next award. The next award is fly off to the right and explode. And that goes to Eric Jones, who caused the massive crash because he overcorrected coming off a of turn two. You know, after Jimmy Johnson had his two little spinny incidents and set up that restart, and he just he just lost it, man. Like nobody was even near him. Head on into the wall. Massive crash. Hit Jamie McMurray. Obviously, we said Matt Kenseth was in it how many times, and several other cars like Clint Boyer all affected jesus eric you know you done fucked it up well glad you're okay though next award all right our next award is goddamn goddamn and if you couldn't tell by my uh voice impression it goes to dale jr because for the second week in a row he missed another big wreck that's right he missed the big wreck on the back straightaway that tyler was just talking about and it resulted in him getting another top 10 finish he once again for the third time in four weeks he finished seventh yeah something obviously has been found in that 88 team that's making him fast once again and we're going to one of their better tracks martinsville speedway this week and uh let's face it junior nation cannot wait for it so yeah next award yeah the next award we have a couple cigars to hand out and the first one goes to christopher bell for winning his first ever xfinity race and in man it was in dramatic fashion with about Five or four to go, he pulled a classic dirt move on Eric Jones, the slide job. And then, I mean, he couldn't have done it really any more perfect. He dove down in there, got a, he got a good run, dove down in there, slid up, parked it right in front of Eric Jones. But instead of crossing under him, Eric Jones decided to hit the gas and uh, try to pass him on the outside. But where are you going to go? There's an 18 car sitting in front of you, so he wrecks his own car and can't even get a top 10 he, his car was destroyed but i mean congrats to bell i mean he, he knows what he's doing out there if he was racing larson i don't think those cars would even touched so congrats to those guys next cigar the next cigar goes to ryan blaney who finished in third place and he advanced on at a round of eight and it wasn't a very easy weekend for him considering his qualifying time was disallowed so he started in last and he drove all the way up through the field had a really solid outing and just a clean day. It's what he needed. So good job, Brian. You get a cigar. And the last cigar goes to Chris Busher, a very big top 10 surprise for him. Sixth place. If I'm correct, that's his best outing of the year. So nice job, man. You know, those guys have not been quick. They just got pretty lucky to be in a position they were in, and he took advantage of it and held it. 
So, nice job, man. You get a cigar. And I believe we have one more award. What's that award that we give out pretty frequently? Kane, help me out here. I think it's... Is it a crying towel? <laughs> Oh, Tyler, you bet your ass it is! I just listened to what Derek Jones had to say after getting wrecked by his own teammate in the Xfinity race! Well, I mean, it's not dirt racing, you know, he's not clear. I can't just stop on the top, I mean, he, he was... I didn't expect him just to drive in on the bottom so far, he, he wouldn't be able to hold his lane. I thought we were going to race for the win, and unfortunately there wasn't much of a race, it was more of a, more of a wreck. So. Oh, Eric! It's a dirt room. Is this a dirt racing? Are you kidding me? I know it's not dirt racing, but Christopher Bell is a tried and true dirt racer, and that's one of his signature moves that he does on a dirt track: the slide job. So you couldn't let off the gas. So you had to run right into the back of him and it killed your car. <laughs> no. Eric, you know, if you keep this up, people are going to start losing respect for you. In fact, it was pretty obvious this weekend. You showed exactly who your mentor is. That's right. Yeah, that's right. I took the record of Kyle Clark. Yep. I mean, you drive just like him, but it's a bad trip. At the same time, you act just like him. <laughs> oh, no, Eric. Come on, man. You're better than this. But that's not all, damn it. It's all these whiny ass fans, too, that had a problem with it. And just like this guy right here. Nick, you had a fun chat with him. <laughs> yeah, you a whiny baby. He's a whiny cry baby. And he, he thought it was a dirty ass move, and then I showed him who is, you know, his god of racing, what he said, Regan Smith, and he's like, well, if he did it, it was okay then. What? Pick a side and stick with it. You, you bias. Does that? <laughs> I don't even know what I'm going to say. I'm so pissed at that guy. Man, you don't know what you're talking about. Weirdos, absolute weirdos. All these crybabies going, ugh, get your dirt moves on the dirt track. For Christ's sake, he, he dove it down in there. He was clear. He parked the bus, and Eric Jones had two options cross him over or run him into the back of him. And he chose the latter. So it was his own goddamn fault. Christopher Bell did what he needed to do to win that race. If you have a problem with it, Go fuck yourself. Seriously. I'm just saying. It's like, come on. You want something exciting. Right there it is in front of you. And you bitch about it. God. You get a crying towel. I'm giving it just all the fans. Seriously, you bad fans. You get crying towels. I bet you're the same people that bitch about Martin Truex Jr. winning all the time, too. Yeah, I get you taking time to be the team Toyota winning all the time. He's a good guy. Quit bitching about it. Jesus. And his team lost a crew member this weekend, too, damn it. You sons of bitches. Ugh. See, here we are making it about something else. You just, there's so many bad fans out there. And believe me, we have crying towel stock. Once Perky Jerky starts paying us, we're going to start sending out the crying towels to some of <laughs> wonderful fans. And by wonderful, I mean bitches. Quit your bitching. We're tired of it. You make NASCAR and its fans, the good ones, look bad. We're tired of it. We're moving on now. That's that's kind of cool. I mean, I, I mean, it's not like a 10 out of 10, but I'm saying if it offered to sleep with me on the first date, I'd sleep with it. Yeah, me too. Not bad. No, it's definitely one of the better schemes this year. So you'd sex it down? Uh, I'd say so. I mean, look at that orange. <laughs> look at that black thing. Only if it bought me dinner first. Yep. Nick, nobody's buying you dinner. You buy them dinner. <laughs> Arby's? Absolutely. Yeah, you know it. Nice paint scheme. Yeah, I mean, it's okay. All right. All right. We should probably stop talking about it now. Let's move on. <laughs> All right, it's time to recap the fantasy for Kansas. And, well, Damani once again comes home as a victor. He has come on strong in this chase after, you know, he was so far behind after we let him in this little fantasy thing late, and we're like, eh, he's just there. He's just there in the points. And now all of a sudden, boom, right to the damn lead. And it's going to be pretty damn hard to beat him.
but he got the win again this week after picking Kevin Harvick, who got himself 47 points. Kevin finished in eighth place. Nick, you finished in second by picking Martin Truex Jr., who won the race, but hey, you only have 43 points, you know, sucks to suck, can't win. Kane came home in third after picking Kyle Busch, who finished 10th, and which that was a tiebreaker because Kyle Busch also got 43 points, but obviously Nick with the better finishing gets the priority. And I pick Kyle Larson. Kill me. Ouch. Yeah. No. I can't believe it. I seriously can't. Finished 39th after having an engine failure. First engine failure all year long. Yeah, and in his career, for Christ's sake. You just did not see that coming. If he would have got wrecked, that's one thing. But, man, what a blow. Did not see it coming. And that's pretty much the end of my fantasy hopes. It's going to take an all-out miracle now. But uh, So that means I go first for Martinsville. So I'm going to go with somebody who's very good at Martinsville, and that's Denny Hamlin. Jackass! He's won there several times. Uh, I believe he's second on the active list, only to Jimmy Johnson. So, yeah. I'll just hope that he just decides to pull something out of his ass. All right, Kane, you finished third, so that means you're next. Who is your pick for Martinsville? Uh, my pick for Martinsville is, well, I think you said it. He's the active wins leader there, and that is Jimmy Johnson. The price is wrong, bitch. Uh, obviously, he uh, managed to advance into the round of eight, and it was in this race a year ago that he got to the championship race at Olmstead. So, yep, Jimmy Johnson. Nick? All right. I am going to go with Kyle Busch. You're going to die, clown! Again, I don't really want him to win. And I don't know how many wins he has there exactly, but he always seems to be near the front and being some kind of a factor. I mean, he really has nothing to lose. He's probably guaranteed uh, to go to Homestead, so he's going to give it his all. It's an aggressive track. He knows how to do that, so Kyle Busch. Well, Damani, who are you taking for this week? <laughs> you eat pieces of shit for breakfast? No. Well, that wraps up yet again another episode of Behind the Wall, presented by Perky Jerky. We appreciate you listening. Let us know what you think. Please. We keep, we've keep we said this so many times. Leave a comment. Give us a like. Share it. Share it with your buddies. We could use 14 views. We want your feedback. We've been trying so hard all year long. Let us know, damn it. <laughs> Just Let us know. Please. We're not asking for much. Anyway. Just 30, 40 minutes of your time. Thank you, Kane. <laughs> <laughs> for Demonte HD, he's run away with our fantasy. I'm not happy about it. Kane Jr. 88, he's he's distancing himself from us. We'll probably have to fire him from the show soon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, after Homestead. <laughs> for after Homestead. <laughs> <laughs> for Thermite 917. Um, okay, he's not that cool. He's not really you're not that cool. cool. You're, you're not that damn cool. Be a better Kenza fan. You know, he could have used your support today, and you weren't there for him. Even when the rain started to pour. I was there for him. No, Just you weren't. In spirit, not physically. Mm-mm. He would have wanted you there physically and in spirit, but you weren't there for either. So, just saying. Stop being a Fairweather fan. And for myself, Junior Nation 5, 7, 88. I love Martinsville. I hope to be in Martinsville. This has been Behind the Wall, presented by Perky Jerky. You've been Behind the Wall, and thank you for listening. Uh, I was definitely right up there with, um, wasn't it, I mean... Well, we don't have any news topics specifically for the week, but there is one thing that stands out. Dale Jr.'s having a baby! Yeah, boy! But it's a girl! You're doing you so bad, you man! Yes! He didn't need Kimmy to get her pregnant either! <laughs> Although he was probably watching through the window. Yep! <laughs> That's oh right, I was. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> that, is too, that is too cringy. We need to do that again. <laughs> I know. Oh my god, you're right. You're right. That sucks. <laughs> Alright, that'll go in the outtakes. Starcom Racing, brand new pain. <laughs> what? It looks like you're blowing your nose there. He caned like, himself. He caned himself. <laughs> you showed exactly who your mentor is! That's right! <sighs> <laughs>
<laughs> and I just got interrupted by my mom because she's trying to sleep. Oh my god, Eric! <laughs> oh, if you wake her up while she's asleep, she will go ape shit on you. That makes oh, sense. Oh, did she? Maybe. Yeah. Yeah, she kind of did. <laughs> okay. Yeah, well. <laughs> that was what. That's gonna be a good outtake. Like you're just screaming and then like silence all of a sudden. Yep. Yeah. Like, yeah, my mom's yelling at me. Because we thought you just forgot who, who you were going to compare him to. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. That was a very weird moment. <laughs> and, yeah. So, you've been behind the wall. And think, no, I don't think you've been behind the wall, actually, because I don't like the way I put, set that up. You jackass!